everybody. In this video, I'm going to be going over the two main ways to scale your web application, which are horizontally or vertically. We'll be going over the pros and cons of both, and then looking at the trade-offs between the two options. So let's say you have your own web app. It's running on a single server to start, and the number of users is rapidly growing, which is obviously a good thing, but those users are starting to complain that your application is running slow, and that's due to the volume of requests increasing so much. So there's a couple different ways or reasons this could be happening. First would be CPU. If you're doing a certain function that requires a lot of processing power, that's obviously going to eventually overwhelm the CPU and slow things down. Same thing with memory, where if your app is doing something where it needs to hold large chunks of data in memory, that will get full and it won't be able to process um, as many requests at the same time. I.O. is how fast your application can read from storage. So if you're doing something where you need to access images or video files stored on the hard drive, you're going to have a limit to how much data you can access at once. And also, uh, the last way would be bandwidth, which is if you're streaming or doing something like that, uh, the amount of data you can push through the network is also limited through a single server. The simplest way to solve these problems initially is pretty... Um, kind of common sense, which is if your server is running slow, just get a bigger server. And that's what vertical scaling is, where uh, you take your initial server, you upgrade whatever area your server is failing in. If it's CPU, memory, whatever, you upgrade that specific area on the server and your web app scales just fine. The problem with this is that there's diminishing returns and limits to scalability. So something like Google, they have data centers all around the world and have hundreds of thousands of individual servers. There's no way you could scale and have a single server handle all that traffic. You'd have to have a server the size of a mountain and it just wouldn't work, obviously. There's also diminishing returns, which we'll go over in a little bit. But basically what happens is the number of CPU cores you add or the amount of memory, there's a limitation. And also as it gets larger, you get uh, less effect for more money. So it's just a bad situation all around. And there's also uh, the single point of failure, which is even if you have one huge server, that's a single point of failure, which means that uh, something as simple as somebody in the data center tripping over the power cord would take out your server, and then you can serve zero traffic. The solution to those problems, as you might have expected, is horizontal scaling. So instead of having a single huge server to handle our traffic, we have multiple smaller servers that can be scaled up and scaled down. And the additional benefit that's built into this solution is redundancy. So if one of these goes down, the other two are still able to handle traffic. So it increases the reliability of our service, and we don't have any angry users if our one uh, big server goes down. So it's kind of like the opposite. Instead of putting all of our eggs in one, ba in one basket, we have these backup servers, essentially. The problem is that it's slightly more complex up front to build this way. Um, but more efficient long term because you can buy commodity hardware and it's much cheaper when you buy in bulk like that. And recently, thanks to the cloud service providers, we can build on their services and it basically abstracts away a lot of that complexity. As a result of that complexity related to horizontal scaling, a lot of the kind of buzzword projects you've heard about are generally dealing with those issues. So it's a good time to be a developer because these big tech companies in a lot of cases have open sourced some of the projects they used to deal with those issues. So we've, we're kind of building on um, their work that they invested billions to solve these problems over the course of decades. So Hadoop, for example, if you're working with huge amounts of data like at Google where they're working with petabytes, it's impossible to get a machine or a server that can handle petabytes of data by itself. So what you do with Hadoop, which is based on MapReduce, it breaks up a massive amount of data and splits it off so that it can be worked on by thousands of different servers and then it puts that data back together so those results come back in and it's essentially abstracting away all that complexity related to handling those thousands of servers. Docker is also a similar case where um, it allows you to put your applications in containers and easily deploy them to various servers and built on top um, of those containers, you can think of Kubernetes or K8s, however you pronounce that. Um, it abstracts away a lot of the complexity again of dealing with all those different servers and that was spun out of Google as well. 
So that's why a lot of people, even if you don't necessarily know what all these things do, that's why people are so hyped about this stuff is because it allows you as a small company to not have to invest billions of dollars trying to solve this stuff and it can kind of just magically allow you to scale your applications. Now let's take a closer look at some of those trade-offs that we mentioned earlier, but I didn't really go into too much detail on. So first is the diminishing returns of vertical scaling. So if we look at this chart, we can see uh, the blue is one CPU core on the server and it gradually goes up to eight. And you can see, so one CPU core, two, you get almost a double increase in improvement. But then once you go to three CP or four CPU cores, you can see it gradually drops off here. And once you go up to eight, you barely get any performance bonus, even though you're paying double the amount of money or more in some cases for those extra cores, you're not getting twice as much performance. So this is basically the limitation to vertical scaling is that you keep pumping in more money, but you're not getting as much um, return on that investment. And plus, like I said, you're still um, at risk of not having that redundant server and that brings in all sorts of issues. So the next trade-off is latency. So a benefit of horizontal scaling is that you can have your application running in multiple data centers all across the world. This is a map showing where all of Google's data centers are located at. And this is very important if you're doing something like online video games where people are playing against each other, you need um, these people to be able to, as quickly as possible, make contact with your application so there's no lag. If you had one single big server located in the USA, somebody in Australia is gonna have big issues. And that's because when your requests and your data is going through a fiber optic cable, it can only travel the speed of light, which is fast, but in something like an online shooter, even a couple milliseconds delay is gonna cause issues. So a built-in bonus of horizontal scaling is that you can have your application running in multiple data centers around the world and reduce that latency and boost the user experience for people using your application. And finally, to kind of summarize everything in a single chart, we can see uh, our extra capacity and our price. So initially, this horizontal, you can see it's the price is higher because of that extra complexity. But as we begin to scale, it becomes more linear because we've paid the upfront cost of designing our system to work and be able to scale horizontally. With the vertical scalability, is you need more capacity, those components, those servers, get much more expensive and eventually it just becomes impossible. You can see it's going exponential. It's past a certain point, if you're trying to vertically scale, you're gonna have to transition over to a horizontal scaling system and change up the entire architecture of your app, which obviously rewriting takes a lot of time and money from an engineering perspective. So that's basically it for this video. If this helped you out or you're interested in future videos covering system design, be sure to hit like and also subscribe. If you have any questions or confused about anything, leave a comment and I'll try to help you out. But for now, that's it. Thanks.